Hello. Hey. Hi, guys. Oh, I've just realised we've timed this badly because we've just fed Lucy, so you'll probably hear like <laughs> smunchy, smunchy noises Back behind you. Background snuffling. Um, but yes, uh, so hi, guys. Uh, it is uh, Friday the 26th of June, uh, which makes it day 98 of oh. lockdown. 98. Crikey Moses. Um, yeah, it's bonkers, isn't it? Like, I am actually quite looking forward to Sunday's live vlog because it's a bit oh. different. Um, cause yeah, we don't normally have feedback during, uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, how, how are you doing today, Chris? Well, today I've mostly been feeling a bit anxious. How about you? Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, oh gosh, it's all very, um, all very difficult and, and, uh, quite unpleasant actually. Um, so anyone who's an avid viewer of this uh, will know that a few days ago, well actually a couple of times, but uh, in two different vlogs uh, we talked about a certain comedian on the circuit that Chris does know, um, mm. where some quite serious allegations have come out against him of abuse and sexual misconduct and, and some quite dark stuff. And he's put out like a kind of public apology, and yeah. uh, the first one we didn't name him uh, because the victim hadn't, but in the second one a second victim had come out and kind of... Um, name, named names. him so we thought well in which case that's fair enough to also kind of name him and kind of point out how this kind of second testimony yeah uh highlights the hypocrisy yeah slightly pointed apology, out that but, he apologized uh, for certain things but he only apologized for things that he'd been called out on yeah and there were, and things that there were other things yeah, going on that's one thing in particular he said oh well that was just a one-off isolated incident and then it turns out he'd done similar things to yeah. another woman so so we talked about that at some length uh, um and i think like it's safe to say that we um uh, call that call that out where we see it. Uh, I have mentioned uh, that I thankfully I've not met this particular comedian, uh, but I've got my own stories um, where uh, I've been treated badly by men, uh, mm. and at times that's pushed the realms of legality, and other times flagrantly broken the law. Um, and so talking about somebody who's been called out for that kind of behaviour uh, is quite upsetting and a little bit triggering. So I think thinking about all of this has sort of got me a little bit anxious anyway. Um, uh, but another, another thing I, I want to say up front is uh, obviously we talked about that specific individual. Um, there are other people who've been accused of things and allegations and things. Um, but obviously, and some stuff that I quote unquote know uh, about people, but it's very hard to kind of um, name certain people if unless you have sort of facts or yeah. there are confessions because you don't know what Plus, the results are in terms of lit litigation yeah. or if you're just spreading kind of gossip and hearsay and things. Yeah. So it's... Plus, uh, obviously, if someone, if you know um, and believe that somebody has treated somebody else badly, it's difficult to come out and say that without then mm. naming the name of the person who's. The, been the victim of this behaviour, which actually so, is kind of dangerous territory. Uh, I think that would be a dick move, to be honest. It's not your story. So what tends to happen, I think, is it's kind of common knowledge and you would perhaps warn particularly female comedians that this is not a person that you want to sort of get involved with and that kind of thing. But it's hard to publicly actually sort uh -huh. of say, this person has done this because you're kind of sharing somebody else's story and um, putting them in a position where they might not be in a place to sort of talk about it openly. As I've said, with my own stories, some of them I have spoken about uh, with friends and family, others I haven't. Um, it is a hard thing to do and uh, can be quite sort of upsetting to even talk it through and, and keep going back to it and because you kind of have to relive it and that's not much fun. Um, so having called that out, um, that's not to say that perhaps there aren't other things on the grapevine that have been heard, mm. um, uh, but I would like to sort of uh, clarify one thing. In um, us coming out with that in one of our vlogs, um, we got a little bit of backlash actually, which suggested that we were caught, we were being hypocr hypocrites allegedly is what was being suggested that we were calling out this bad behavior in one person but turning a blind eye to it in somebody else that we know now i would like to say emphatically nobody that either of us work with or associate with 
has been accused of sexual misconduct, as far as I to know. To our knowledge, yeah. To our knowledge. Um, um, and we're not interested in working with people who no. have. Um, so it, I think what has happened a little bit is uh, sometimes when these things come out, um, you kind of get, it's kind of hard to say, but basically um, the suggestion is that somebody else that we have both worked with mm. um, has essentially been accused of, um, uh, well... Well, basically, we might as well, I mean, they've both talked about it publicly, yeah. so... Yeah, the term that he has been accused of is being a rape apologist. He's also been accused of silencing someone S- who's... Silencing people for speaking out. tried to speak out. Um, and that, but well, I think we might as well name them. Oh, it's up to you. I think they've both talked about it publicly, so I don't think there's any harm in kind of saying that... Okay. Uh, Simon Ma- Emmanuel... Uh, who we both actually worked with when right. Chris does yeah. was a crowd with him We've weekly, on and I've been on that him. the one time. Um, and so basically, someone came called Peyton Quinn, uh, spoke up about some stuff that had happened to them, and this was several years ago now. Mm. And and I've posted about this on my own Facebook as well, because to be honest, I think it's very easy to kind of go, oh, we're all doing the right thing now, and not acknowledge where perhaps at different points. Mm you know, not deliberately and not endorsing any sort of sexual abuse or anything, but no. just maybe the omission of sort of thinking, oh, this isn't my fight, I'm not going to get involved. Yeah. Uh, and and that's obviously not good enough. Um, but that happened where she spoke out and it either got kind of people sort of going, oh, it's not for me to get involved in, or, or having a semantic debate about whether she was talking about it in the correct... they were talking about it in the correct forum. Mm. Uh, and I just... Um, and I, I think that they were let down and I think it kind of lets down yeah. other women who kind of feel it, yeah. and other people who feel like they can't Were I somebody in out? the background in this forum and I mm. saw because the, the thing that I believe was being discussed was that Peyton had received rape threats um, by somebody else who is no longer as far as I know mm. uh, sort of working in the, in the scene uh, but Simon essentially kind of shot that down and kind of sort of said this isn't really the right place for the obviously that's awful but i don't think this is the right place for it and um that was wrong that was wrong to do and i will say that was absolutely wrong but to then suggest that simon has a pattern of silencing victims and uh being a rape apologist i think that's going a bit too far and his behavior was kind of being conflated with the behavior of you know, and like I so said, I agree with Ellie, like his behaviour is wrong. He's, he agrees. He's posted up his own apology today, which, you know, you, you may well think has been a long time coming, and I'm sure he would agree. And, and But uh, he's, posted up, he's also posted up a screenshot... Um, of what he actually said. Yeah, so, so for kind of full openness and, and honesty, and people can make up their own minds about what they think of mm. that and whether they think uh, they... Yeah, I will that's... say I didn't like the content of what he'd actually said. I had only, until I read that actual comment, I'd only oh. heard sort of, and also it's back in memory of like people's, various people's versions of what they think he said and what he thought he'd said. And stories and then, and kind of Chinese whispers yeah. down throughout the years. Um, so of... I um, saw the comment for the first time yesterday oh. um, and I didn't like it because I, I couldn't help but look at it and think, well, when... In the past, I have had to come forward. Um, basically, uh, I, I don't know how to say it without sort of giving too many details. And I don't really want to give details that will allow somebody to know who I'm talking about. Mm. But essentially, uh, I had uh, a man who was in my social circle who mistreated me quite badly. Um, I, after the event, basically told him to stay away from me. What that really meant was I avoided most occasions where I thought there was a risk he might be. But then one day he stopped avoiding me and put me in a position where I had to stay around him for a whole day. And that was my point where I um, felt too much. It was too much. So that was the point at which I actually went to my circle of friends. I hadn't wanted to discuss it with them. I hadn't wanted to relive it. I didn't want people to know that about me. I didn't want people to have that image in their head of me in that position. But once it was in the position, I was put in the position where I couldn't trust him to keep his word and stay away from me. I needed the protection of my friends to keep him away from me. Had I come forward and the people I told 
had shot me down and said, I don't really want to discuss this here or I don't really want to discuss this now, that would have felt like an absolute betrayal. It would have felt like taking his side. Um, and that would have been awful. So to feel like you have been um, silenced or told not to discuss this and told not to come forward is awful and wrong and I don't condone it. I would never condone it. Um, however, I don't think this was coming from a... because I don't think... it wasn't as though he was saying it's fine that somebody threatens you with rape. That would be being rape apologistic to me, I would say. He didn't condone the behaviour, but he did suppress the urge to talk about it, which wasn't cool. And yeah, and he that's... is not accused of personal sexual misconduct under any level, as far as I know. And I would be shocked and appalled if he were. Yeah. And I'm, I'm confident that that would not be the case. Um, I think a bit of Chinese whispers did happen. And I think also there is an element of some pe some sort of people quite sort of enjoying the, the drama of it and sort of feeding it a bit and sort of stirring the pot a little bit. But with everything in a slightly exaggerated, slightly hyperbolic way, um, which uh, then essentially the point at which I was like, this isn't OK, was where it was suggested that you're turning a blind eye to oh. sexual misconduct. Now, I can't vouch for um, e everyone in this, but I can vouch for you. And um, from my own experience, but also experience that I have witnessed when Chris has been discussing events that have happened with friends and other people on the comedy circuit, I know full well that Chris is a phenomenal ally and would have the back of anyone, even if it was somebody that they weren't particularly, he wasn't particularly fond of, he would call that shit out. Or at the very, very least, Avoid that person, avoid working with that person, and warn other people against that person privately. But that said, I do think, you know, as I mentioned from the Facebook, there are times when, um, you know, things have maybe not been dealt with as, as firmly or kind of, I haven't spoken up about yeah. things as much as I could have done, and... You know, and that's something I want to commit to doing better. Well, on that, though, you have spoken out about bad behaviour now, mm. and you've received backlash for it. Yeah. And that, I think, is very dangerous, because that, anyone else who is silently observing and has maybe their own stories, is going to be discouraged from coming forward. Because essentially, it was like, yes, you're being an ally to an extent but you're not being enough of an ally or you're not being an ally well, in the right way the, and then actually you had you were being essentially punished for what i consider to be good behavior the trouble is like, so it's making it easy for everybody else to stay quiet which actually is what we need people not to do so i think that's dangerous territory and i think it's unfair that you should have any personal backlash for a third hand account of something shitty that somebody else did to somebody else and then somebody else made a comment about that well so it's so third hand that i don't think it's fair for you to have negative consequences after having come forward and i consider it to be a good ally to people who've been mistreated so i think it's it's not fair and i can t like it's one of those classic things of like i can take something if people want to aim it at me but when someone sort of comes for someone I love, that's where I get a bit feisty, uh, um, the, which isn't necessarily helpful. The, um, the trouble but, is, I think, is that, um, you know, neither of us sign off on what Simon said, neither of us give him a pass for that. Uh, I've been privy to conversations with Simon prior to this uh, where he's expressed regret and remorse over those words mm. um, and um, and maybe that's where there's a disconnect where uh, I've had an awareness of his feelings about that where other people involved maybe didn't know maybe he didn't know we had, had any regret should have or... uh, approached them directly sooner or publicly apologized mm. sooner um, but basically I think what he said wasn't characteristic of him as a person. No. And it's I. It and I read think generally, like somebody in a really bad mood on one day saying the wrong thing, which, which I'm not excusing excuse that, it, no, but that's but how it read. It read as somebody a bit I frustrated. I think generally someone who means well and tries to be a good ally and generally succeed. Generally speaking, succeeds in being mm. a good ally. Um, and so I don't think he's someone who should be written off 
or yeah. that I should kind of shun him based on on what happened, even no, though it did can't... lead to her. That wasn't his intention, and. You can't, think... if, like, if you're actually getting to the stage where you sort of can't work with anyone who's said the wrong thing once, like, it's, like, I'm sorry, but that's just impossible. Nobody would be able to work with anyone. So We've it's... all fucked up. Everybody has fucked up. And the trouble is, then I sort of, sort of condemn one person for a pattern of abusive behaviour that has lasted at least eight years, as, as we know. Um, abusive and at times illegal and, and certainly immoral behaviour over a long period that has been repeated offences and actually fake apologies have been issued that have shown no change and no contrition and no sort of genuine remorse. That is a whole different ball game to someone who's essentially fucked up once. One big fuck up, it is a yeah. big fuck up, but it is one isolated fuck up. So for me to kind of... As far out, as I know. Speak out against the one person who's, who's done all this abuse and a pattern of behaviour over years and to be called a hypocrite for working with someone who, may, who didn't abuse, uh, sexually abuse anyone, um, but made a mistake in their handling of a situation three years ago and as far as I'm aware, hasn't repeated that behaviour. No. Uh, feels like, well, it just feels like an unfair kind of conflation. And don't get me wrong, look, there's, it's, well, the thing there is, there are loads like, of people who are, who are kind of yeah. deserve more support yeah, and concern well, than, than me in any exactly. of this. I'm not seeking that. But what's difficult then is when we the thing I worry blog, about though is it's, it does discourage people from speaking out, and actually that's the opposite of any anyone involved in this mm. doesn't want that. I'm sure, um, like, I think it's to be encouraged, if you feel able to, to speak out about your experiences. And I hold my hand up saying, I haven't spoken out publicly about some of mine. Um, if, uh, and that's that's my choice, and that's anyone who has been mistreated in that way, that's a personal choice. But if someone does have the bravery to come forward, they should be supported in doing so. Absolutely. There's no grey area on that. Absolutely should be supported. And what's tricky as well is when people then choose like the comments uh, on the Facebook post about this video to kind of then kind of come out with an attack and a, an accusation, and it's difficult to know how to handle that because you know you engage, you try and engage with it, and you could be dealing with someone who's frankly a black belt grandmaster in internet arguments yeah. and can and will twist your words or move the goalposts and it doesn't matter what the facts are they will kind of you know chase their agenda and kind of and what whatever um or you go well well this isn't you know this is just about our blog and, I, and that's i don't think that's fair and it doesn't give the full picture all right well i'll delete that and then you're open to accusations of trying to silence people or kind of not give people their kind of right to reply whatever yeah. it may be uh, or that you're, you know, you're somehow guilty because you've tried to kind of hide something. Yeah, so like deleting something without uh, no kind of makes you like going, oh shit, I've got called out. I'll but make then, it go you away. Know, which... Then you're left in a situation where people are kind of, you feel like you are being attacked and you don't know well, who's the really sad thing... it and who's thinking badly of you. And and it's uh, and like I said, it's, it's left me feeling very kind of anxious and and, and unhappy. Yeah, it's all because but... like the thing is. I will still continue to call out bad behaviour where I see it and I could like, I have not pulled any punches in the whole history of this blog wherever I have seen that sort of behaviour. Um, I'm not going to start doing so now. Um, what I don't like is actually there has been moments where I've regretted us talking about that initial comedian and it's like, well no, actually I don't want to regret doing that because I still think that was the right thing to do. Mm. Um, and, and, yeah, I just don't want anybody else who's maybe thinking about telling their story or maybe thinking about um, outing someone for it, the terrible behaviour to be discouraged from doing so based on having seen us. And also, so. yeah, I wanted to make clear that Peyton deserved more support she did. for uh, the stuff that she was trying to speak up about and whether it be people shouting her down or people like me just not saying anything like, we all have a hand in, in where we should have done more and could have done more. I'm sorry about that. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I am, I'm sorry for that. And I hope that kind of by people speaking out about this and kind of not brushing the past under the carpet, mm. 
maybe people who were there at the time or people who've arrived since and have heard stories or whatever don't feel like Cardiff Comedy is an unsafe place where you can't speak, where you're going to be chastised or kind of ignored if you speak up about things. And hopefully it can be like a better, safer place for people yeah. to kind of um, just do comedy and kind of, uh, you know, move forward in a more positive way. And I'm probably rambling now. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 all pretty, um, pretty unpleasant. And it's, uh, yeah, like... It, sh- it should never be that somebody doesn't feel safe and um, should call call it out uh, if you can and support those who do have the bravery to do so, uh, which uh, I believe I always have, but I certainly vow to always do so um, going forward. So I think that's I think that's uh, something that we can leave there. Um, so sorry if this has been a bit of a heavy one. Um, but it kind of felt like we needed to say something about it. Yeah. Um, think... If anybody does uh, want to discuss it any further or clarify anything, uh, do feel free to message either one of us. Um, uh, my f- well, message through the YouTube channel, and uh, we can discuss further if if needed. Absolutely happy to do so. And if we fucked up in the way that we've handled this, let us know because we don't want to. We, we we're trying our best. Um, um, so yeah. for now, though, should we draw a line? Yes, under I this? think. And I tell you what, just because there's, just because there's probably people watching this who don't know about any of this, mm. who just are going, this is a real tonal shift. <laughs> yeah. I, this I remember when this vlog was fun. Uh, um, yeah. So can we? I, I've got a light-hearted thing that I thought might be nice. Yeah, a look, slightly let's, lighter-hearted. Let's thing, go for it. Yes, so please. basically, and this was uh, drawn to my attention from a uh, friend friend of the vlog. Ian Bowden. Yeah. Um, Hi, Ian. Hi. Uh, and he uh, drew my attention to some, uh, what I think are some quite positive changes um, that has come out of the Black Lives Matter things. And this isn't people being, like, cancelled or forced to do anything. Hmm. You know, so don't be getting up in arms. People who don't like, uh, you know, people being made to do things because the things they were doing previously were bad. <laughs> um, but, like... I. It's a very strange way of phrasing that, but okay. I think you know what I mean. But, you know, when they go, oh, we can't even use, you know, golly dolls on the oh front God. of jam jars anymore, and you can't even, you know. The political correctness brigade gone oh, mad. It's political correctness gone health and safety. <laughs> you can't even use offensive words that upset people anymore without <laughs> people getting upset and offended. It's, you know, so yeah. all of that, those lot can wind their neck in. Because, um, <laughs> so, like, these are people who have volunteered to make these changes, and you might, if you think it's a bit silly, fine, you won't think that, but I think they're trying to make an effort to improve things and change things. Um, a big one is Disney, mm. and again, like, how much of this is, like, with a corporation like Disney, how much of it is succumbing to pressure, I don't know, but um, they have... Uh, for the longest time, had a ride at their parks called Splash Mountain. Oh, I did see this story, yes. Okay, now Splash Mountain uh, is a ride that is, was designed uh, around and, and themed around the Disney film Song of the South. Ah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, I hadn't made the connection, actually, but yeah, that does make sense. Okay, so Song of the South, uh, if you don't know, is a film, it's like half live action, half animation and kind of and the animated figures kind of it's interact the one with, with the zippity doo dah it, it isn't it is yes. it turns out is a song with kind of racist connotations that we do not uh, hear about which Ooh. is a shame because it's very catchy and it's been <laughs> and there's been lots of cover versions of it by lots of people including um, oh who who played Hannah Montana Miley Cyrus Miley Cyrus and is I'm it not, her that played Hannah Montana yes. yes so I'm not accusing her of racism I think like when she was working for the Disney Corporation, they, you know, it was just one of their songs that's in canon as part yeah. of the Disney thing. And I don't think people... I'm going to have to read the lyrics later. I only I know the first bit. Yeah, I I mean, I it's, it's not necessarily, like, explicitly racist in the lyrics, but it's... It's got undertones. It's got kind of background in kind of slavery and, and things. Right. So, so, anyway... Um, so, 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 so <laughs> yeah, the film um, Song of the South, from which that song is the... Is, that's the best known thing of it... Mm. Um, but that film has basically, um, it was also, I was listening to, I watched a documentary, or listened to a documentary about this, I should say, uh, and I was like, it was 
they gave like the lead actor like a best supporting actor Oscar. Mm. The guy, the guy who played basically like a slave, right? Who kind of worked on the right? I don't on, know the story. I've never seen it on the farm, and uh, and they gave him a best supporting actor Oscar, uh, and he died very like shortly afterwards, and he kind of, um, and you know, and I'm the theory put forward by this documentary mm. is that. He was kind of so old and ill by the time they gave him this award that the Academy could kind of give him the award, mm. be seen to be doing like a good progressive thing of giving a, a black man an Academy Award. Mm. But because he was old and ill and was going to die, he was essentially seen as a harmless black man that wasn't going to force real progressive change in right. the industry or kind of uh, be outspoken That's and his family would just depressing. be grateful for the honour. Yeah. So, um, and it's... Uh, the, uh, it's actually a podcast called You Must Remember This. It was one series of that was all focused on um, the Song of the South. And it's a really good uh, podcast generally. That series is very good. Song of the South, Disney have, have long stated they're never, never going to put it out on DVD. It's not on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I imagine if you really want to find out what all the fuss is about, there's lots of essays and articles online. And, and Like I say, you can listen to that podcast. I imagine you can probably find bootlegs or, or versions online if you really want to check it out but anyway it's, it's not been available for years and years and years but Splash Mountain has maintained you know with the theme from it's themed around Song of the South um, I think it's kind of like a, a mine cart sort of thing isn't it Splash yeah. Mountain I have and like I, I, I think, think when I was a Q kid I went to Euro Disney when it was okay. still called Euro Disney and I, I sort of remember it being this kind of like old school mining mountain thing I don't and remember. I think when you're queuing for the ride it kind of it plays Song of the South. I don't think it's very explicit, the references, but nonetheless, Disney, Disney have decided, right, we're getting rid of that, and we're going to uh, make it themed around the Princess and the Frog. Oh, lovely. Which is a Disney film that actually I haven't seen, but it is widely it's available. It's good, and actually, actually, that it, one. And actually, it's the first sort of black... Not it. It's the fir first film to feature a black Disney princess, I was going to yeah. say, and then I was going to say she's the first black Disney princess, and I ended up saying it's the first black Disney <laughs> princess, which is not... <laughs> very objectifying and it, I didn't mean that uh, god the latest <laughs> oh god. controversy oh, so god. Um, um, no so they're the redesigning first, the rides so yeah I think it's good that they've kind of um, gone not just scrap the thing from the past but actually give a prominent kind of positive um, reimagining reimagining with a, a well, film with nice. a black hero um, and we've not seen that so we probably should watch that at some point I as well. have seen it once oh, have you? quite right. a long time ago but I didn't actually I, it was on in someone else's house so I, uh, I wasn't like watching it properly I think I their see. kids were watching it and I was sort of catching it was catching my eye you, you were trying to, uh, trying to watch it yeah. and all the grown ups kept spoiling it by yeah, talking at you it basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been there um, uh, so yeah the, so I remember thinking the music was really good um, mm. and wanting to sort of give it a proper watch so we should watch it um, is, um, so yeah, that actually though does remind me of another thing, totally a separate um, story, to, but just uh, incremental progressive change and idiots on the internet, which it amused me greatly. Um, so today there was a story uh, about a certain uh, supermarket chain in New Zealand um, and they were going to be the first, as far as anybody knows, the first um, chain that will call period products period products rather than calling them euphemistic things like feminine hygiene or sanitary products on the shelves they will be labeled period products or period care things like that uh, the basic thinking behind that is that by referring to them in this euphemistic way uh, particularly with feminine hygiene and things like that could suggest that there is something unhygienic about having periods or that it's shameful or that it's something we shouldn't talk about and Essentially, it's just, I think, a nice, small gesture. Of course, the What Next Brigade had their field day with it, but there were some delightful... Tro they were trolls, absolutely were trolls, but they were hilarious trolls. The picture they had used for, to, to, for the article uh, was somebody sort of holding a pink menstrual cup. Mm. Um, and obviously, quite a lot of people didn't know what that was, um, so somebody sort of said, oh, like, what have bells got to do with periods? <laughs> and I was like, bless. Um, but this one chap came along and went, oh no, that's dangerous. It'll end up in your stomach. Look, 
I don't think you quite understand female biology there. Um, and so obviously he got quite, quite, like quite playfully annihilated. Yeah. Um, but he doubled down and he was going, no, uh, it's a foreign body in, it, like if you put that in, it'll be a foreign body and your body will digest it. Uh, to which somebody went, don't worry guys, I don't think this man has met a cervix. Um, I don't, I like, that's not, that's not how any of this works. Or a biology textbook. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, sort of somebody, would, and actually we were, people were being quite patient and trying to explain to him how they work, but I don't think he wanted to know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then someone said, well, no, it like, the worst thing that you might have happen is that it might come out when you don't want it to. It's not going to do any damage. It's just the worst thing that will happen is it'll shift position and come out. Uh, he said, no, I imagine gravity could make it float up inside you. And I was like, gravity doesn't make things float up. But what are you talking about? I'd like, just like, level it. But like, he was, <laughs> it really amused me that he kept doubling down and kept going, no, no, I definitely know all about menstrual cups. You didn't know what one was a second ago, Dylan. Um, yeah, he did crack me up. But um, yeah, also with that, you do get the what next brigade. Oh God, you can't, you, 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 like they have to, you're constantly shoving periods down your throat now. I'm like, no, no, they're not. You probably, if you're offended by the idea of periods, you probably don't go to the feminine hygiene aisle when you're in the supermarket. Um, and I certainly imagine even if you have another half who is female, um, you're going to be the kind of person that they can't ask to pick up some tampons for them. I think, um, it, you know, it might be useful if these things are clearly labelled as period products. Like, yeah. I mean, you asked me just to pick up um, some cotton pads um, from the kind of yeah. um, supermarket the other day, and I'm struggling just to, to do that. So I imagine if, <laughs> if you send some men to get... To get period products, but they don't say period products on them. Yeah. Going, well, I don't know. Hygiene products? I don't know. Is this a roll-on deodorant? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what... what any of this is. Applicator? What are the... um, where, where do you apply? I, you know, and so maybe clear labelling is good for partners who have to do the shopping. Yeah, and I, think, I guess, like, I think, like, yeah, we don't need to be so... But, like, I, I'm not even actually sort of saying, oh, all shops could do this. I think they all should do this. I just think it's a nice gesture and it oh. shows us a small bit of progression. Um, it doesn't harm anyone, does it? Like, no. It's the what next brigade. But the thing is, I really, I re- it really means a lot to me to be able to talk about feminine hygiene <laughs> products. <laughs> I like the euphemism. It's made a big difference in my life. <laughs> my life as a man. Um, <laughs> If um, a man can't call an item a feminine hygiene product in his own home or local supermarket, <laughs> what can he do? <laughs> but um, I, don't, I know yeah, we're... it's bonkers. But I, yeah, I think like it is. I guess that's a light-hearted bit of something I to know, just take the edge hopping, off. I know we're hopping about a bit, but there were a couple more examples that Ian. Oh right. Uh, sent us. Oh sorry, I didn't I know realize that's, that's all right. I was um, I was focused on Splash Mountain so, and then I moved on. So first of all, uh, a band called Lady Antebellum. Mm. Uh, have changed their name to Lady A. What does antebellum mean? Now, antebellum, I had to look this up myself, mm. it means like a pre-war period, um, sp- more specifically off- used usually to talk about the pre-Civil War period in America. Right. And I think the implication being that that was some sort of a golden age. Right, but obviously, I see. if you are black, you go, not a golden age, actually. Yeah, it wasn't great. Um, I don't know if, if it's specifically always racist like it might be people going oh you know just people kind of maybe just a sense of glory days of like, oh, sort of those like, were good... though they were pro- quite problematic glory days uh, yeah though, and not they? really thinking too much about it but like yeah. certainly there are those the you know it could be to the defense I think so... lady a is just a better band name anyway yeah, lady I... antebellum I, well would i imagine in most people go what what's antebellum yeah, I don't I, know. Maybe it's in more in common parlance in America, perhaps. Well, they I, are I don't know. from America, um, mm. and I believe the South of America. Right. Because uh, I felt quite out of touch because Ian told me about this, and I was thinking I haven't even heard of Lady Antebe- Antebellum. Yeah, and you're you're uh, quite a music geek as well. Well, I wouldn't go that far anymore. I used to be, uh, but now I've got old and lost touch, and I thought, oh God, I haven't even heard of Lady Antebellum. I don't. <laughs> and then uh, and I looked into it, and I don't feel so bad anymore because it turns out they are country music. Oh right. Um, wow. And I wish I could remember who'd said this. Someone on Facebook or Twitter the other day said... Uh, I've seen if, the meme doing the rounds, actually. Like if, you, if you could eradicate one genre of music, 
uh, from the world. Uh, which which genre would it be, and why would it be country music? <laughs> uh, and I think that's so, a tad unfair. It's not my bag, but a lot of people really like it. I mean, I I've got no problem with a bit of like country influenced kind of rock music sometimes. And a bit of country then, pop, it's not too um, bad sometimes. A, but, but it is just certainly a, like a, full on like, country is a bit. Uh, and actually, yeah. like my mum will attest to this. I have a, an unreasonable dislike of the song Jolene by Dolly Parton. Um, I won't go so far as to say phobic, <laughs> but mm. I would go so far as to say a very serious aversion. I hate it. I really hate that song. I love many covers of it, but Dolly Parton's version of that song drives me bonkers, and I can't even really tell you why, other than in I have a weird memory of childhood that it was just always being played on the radio when mm. I was a child, and I just... I think like I just got overexposed to it. And I was like, this is the only song they ever play. My mum used to listen to the radio, Radio Two, all the time. Like from, as soon as she gets up in the morning, my mum's an early bird. She gets on the radio. The radio doesn't get turned off until seven p.m. at night, when at that point TV is allowed, or at least it was when you were a kid. Um, but yeah, Jolene. I'm like, oh yeah. So that particular bit of country music I would annihilate. But oh. um, and also another band who are another country band, but this one I had heard of, mm. uh, the Dixie Chicks. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah, uh, they are just going to be from now on. They're just going to be the Chicks. Oh, okay. Uh, because it turns out again, I'd kind of look into this. I knew that Dixie had kind of well, I knew that it had country connotations so, um, uh, and deep south connotations. Yeah, but it I apparently it didn't refers really to the southern means. states, and it was co- the phrase was coined uh, when it was used in a song that was often used as a kind of confederate marching song ah right okay so uh again as far as i'm aware this is not them uh, succumbing pr- to pressure per They're se just but making just going, a gesture. Do you know what yeah so it's not like little britain being taken off things and people go well that's not very often. like they agreed and, and chosen to do this. Yeah. although i'm sure the people behind little britain would agree with what's happened to be honest mm. uh i don't see them kind of complaining no uh it's just people sort of shouting out on their behalf but uh yeah, uh, another thing we were talking about, we were talking about the rubbish yesterday. Yes. Well, we were talking about the beaches, all the people flocking yeah, to the Yeah, the bonkers pictures that were coming out from Bournemouth and actually subsequently Ogmore uh, on this side of, of the border. But the Ogmore thing was bonkers because the Ogmore, I don't know if you've seen this, um, police had to break up a mass gathering and it was just hundreds of teenagers. But what it was about, they planned it but it like it escalated. But before lockdown was imposed, somebody had challenged somebody else to a fight, and then they couldn't have it because of lockdown. And then while lockdown's been going on, loads of them have just been getting up in arms. So then basically it was planned and organised that we're going to meet here and have a fight. And there were hundreds of them, oh, and it was insane. Proper West Side Story thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so yeah, like absolutely mental um and yeah like a bunch of teenagers having a mass gathering to have a fight is just ridiculous but the scenes coming out of various beaches but the particularly bad photos were mainly coming out of Bournemouth but a few other beaches around uh around the south coast as well um but yeah the the amount of rubbish that was left in one day by well not holiday makers I guess um day trippers um was staggering Absolutely staggering. I think at one point they, they, they estimated that it was around about 33 tonnes of rubbish. Also, people, because the public loos were not open... Which you did say yesterday I did mention, yeah. So I assume people were going to be doing their business in the sea, which I imagine quite a lot of people did. Mm. But, um, like, the people who were cleaning up the beach had to deal with people who would done poos in like burger wrappers and left them on the beach which is just fucking feral like sort your lives out if you are doing this guys come on pandemic aside like what's (sighs) happened to people where like people beaches are crowded at other times of the year you don't. Is that, that's not a standard thing. No, is it? Like a crowded beach I hope not. Thirteen literal tons of, of rubbish to begin with, and like surely everyone knows it's good manners at the beach to kind of clean up after yourself, take away your rubbish. No one wants a poo in a burger box. 
<laughs> in the car on the way home. But they don't need it at the beach. And, and if it was your dog's poo, you'd clean that up, yeah. wouldn't you? What's going well, I'm on? guessing the kind of people that would leave their own human poos on the beach probably are also people who don't pick up after their dogs. But um, but come on, guys, sort it out. Have a long, hard look in the mirror. Because, um, yeah, that's insane. That's just bonkers. Uh, we've actually gone on quite a long time, but there is one other story that I kind of want to mention. It's quite a brief story, but it's we yeah. haven't Tory bashed in a while. And I think, yeah, um, and, and people were worried we've lost our edge. <laughs> I, it's, I think, like, it's... Yeah, I think we're given everything we had to address at the top. I think, it, you know, yeah, we've, we've it, gone on a bit long today, but, you know, we don't want to kind of just dominate everything with that. We do want to talk about other stuff that's gone on as well. So, and, yes. Yeah, so... Well, Jeremy Hunt has been a right old Jeremy Hunt, hasn't has he? he? Um, what a yeah. Jeremy Hunt. What a hunt. Apologies um, to anyone who doesn't like that sort of language. But, um... <laughs> Sorry, I don't like that sort of man. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, basically, Jeremy Hunt. Uh, on um, There were people... Uh, put forward a notion, uh, a motion, sorry, uh, in Parliament for weekly COVID tests for everybody working within the NHS. Uh, Jeremy Hunt, on his Twitter, uh, on that day that that vote was going to take place, uh, was saying uh, we should absolutely be testing uh, NHS weekly in order to protect them and stay on top of this. So, you know, all, all very sensible. He voted against it. That very same day. So that is, that is hypocrisy of the highest order, but also, like, it's stupidity as well, because Twitter is a public forum, but so is your voting record, you douche canoe. Like, you, for how long did you think that was going to get, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to publicly say something that's very pro-protecting the NHS, and people will like that, but I won't actually vote for it. But also, like, it didn't pass. 330-odd uh, Tory MPs, and probably MPs from other parties, actually, but it was over 300 uh, MPs voted against it. Um, and I couldn't see nothing in that other than costs, because oh. there's a lot of people work for the NHS, so testing them weekly. But the fact of the matter is, it would be good for public safety, because if you are in the NHS, let's say you're a nurse, and you have it, and you don't have symptoms, and you are working you are very likely to be passing that on to patients and the vulnerable and the unwell. So not testing NHS staff regularly will cost lives, for sure. Uh, It'll cost money to do it, but it'll cost lives not to. But they'd rather save the money, because they're... They are right, Jeremy Hunts. Um, yeah, they're pi- oh god, they're just a pile of human detritus. It's just not cool, guys. Um, so yeah, what a hunt. Uh, but yeah, um, I think I think that's everything that we yeah, wanted to cover sorry. today. Do you know what? It is. I zoned out a bit during that last bit. I'm just. <laughs> Oh, I need to go and walk a dog. Yeah, so dog. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, hopefully lighter. But as we did say, and I want to reiterate, if anybody does wish to discuss anything directly with us, please feel free to do so. Um, uh, we would be open to learning, uh, open to discussing our sort of actions and our thoughts and feelings and our justifications for them. Um, um, and uh, just, if we have not, in any way fucked up, I would like to know that I'm fucked up. On these issues, though, like don't be just sending us rambling messages about why the Tories are fine. Oh, that's well, you can. Uh, I will discuss it in length on the blog oh, if you do. All right. Well, <laughs> Ellie will do the reading on that one because I can't get um, um, Yeah, but if yeah. you just want to sort of criticise my eye makeup, you can fuck off. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, guys. So we're going to call it a day there. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, like and subscribe. Hopefully we'll see you on Sunday for a live blog. Uh, and until then, um, yeah, look after yourselves. Like and subscribe. There's uh, no shame yeah, in it. Yeah, against... Against recent rumours, there is no, there is no shame. <laughs> I promise, there's no shame. All right, bye guys. Bye.